I'd call this meeting the Board of Education to order. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the presentation of the colors by the NJROTC. Everyone of these states. Oh, word. March. Mark. Mark. Colors are all three them. Colors. Every. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Every color ready, cut, kind of mark, 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 over. March. March down. March. Color guard. Halt. Order. Colors. Ready. Cut. It is. If you would, if you would uh, say your name, your class, and your plans for after high school. Good evening. My name is Sonny Fan. I am a freshman. After high school, I would like to attend the Naval Academy and become a Navy SEAL. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Paxter. I am a senior. After high school, I plan to, um, to study a detective. Good evening. My name is Duke Weber. I'm a freshman, and my plans after high school are to attend the Naval Academy and commission into the Navy. Good evening. My name is Andrea Robles, and I'm a sophomore. After high school, I would like to become a music professor for the Juilliard School. Thank you, Kadir. Uh, remain standing, please. Just for uh, one moment, we lost a faculty member, a colleague of a Friday, Sally J. Mason, a longtime teacher at New Holland. Her funeral was today. Sally J. Mason was an outstanding third grade and ESOL teacher. If you will, just remain silent for a moment. You may be seated. Do we have any guys from Blue Creek Fall County here? Next item on the agenda are our heroes of the herd. Sharing the streets and grounds. Dr. Mike. Okay. Uh, Good evening. The Gainesville City School is committed to honoring school level employees and their outstanding services to our students, parents, and community. The Heroes of the Herd Award recognizes certified and classified staff for their exceptional leadership, exemplary work, performance, enthusiastic attitudes and commitment to the Gainesville City School System. The award acknowledged those outstanding individuals who work above and beyond and getting the job done for being a true hero using their heart, 
everywhere to reach out to others. The recipient served one day's book while aligning with the district mission to inspire, nurture, challenge, and prepare all students to be successful upon graduation. Now, who wouldn't want to be a hero of the herd? <laughs> Would you like to be a hero of the herd? Well, if you work hard one day, you might be chosen as your school, <laughs> or your school district might choose you from the central office, or from the bus shop, or from the lunchroom. But tonight, we are here to honor as three heroes of the herd. And I am honored to name our winner for our certified staff, Miss Natalie Downs. Please come on down with me. I need you to know that Miss Downs is new to Fair Street. She's my school counselor. Miss Down has shown what a counselor that goes above and beyond the call of duty looks like. She, is take, she has taken intentional time to connect with all of our students and to point to, uh, to the point of even creating surveys to figure out students' needs and personalities. At the beginning of the year, she went around and talked one-on-one -on -one with each and every student to have information to help her best meet our students' needs. She has helped to lead various incentive programs at our school to motivate students to show the four, four R's each day. She has in, created interactive and insightful information for parents to access on our school website. She is always on the go, working in small groups of one-on-one -on -one students. She even has a rotating schedule in which she is in every classroom each month to lead SEL lessons for students. She shows the importance of students' emotional well-being and what it looks like to go above and beyond to help meet our students as a whole. Uh, introducing Ms. Downs, Ashley School Counselor, who is our hero of the herd of Ashley. All right, our next hero of the herd is what our classified staff. And I ask that Ms. Elia Castaneda come on down with us. Ms. Castaneda is an outstanding person. She's always kind and professional. She is always willing to do whatever is needed and works well with the teachers that she supports. She has a great rapport with our parents because she is bilingual and often interprets for events and conferences. Her schedule has been adjusted many, many, many times and she's always flexible and willing to accommodate. She has an awesome spirit. She's the first person that's seen in the morning time when our parents pull up. She greets every one of them with a smile. Ms. Elia Castaneda, our classified staff at Fair Street. Green, who will be representing the Skills USA Cup? I've got it today. Well, first of all, I wish uh, all of you had the same energy that Ms. Prime does today. <laughs> I do not. Uh, Mr. Green is here with me today as we get to recognize Mr. Green for the first letter certificate. Skills USA. Skills USA may be new to, to some of you, 
Uh, as Mr. Nemec brings up some of the pictures from the competitions we had today, just to give you an idea of what Skills USA is. It's a nonprofit education association that partners students, teachers, and industry in 11 career pathways to work together to ensure America has a skilled workforce. Competitions are held statewide in over 100 different skills categories for students to meet their own specific industry partners, other students to show up what they've learned. For the Northeast Georgia Construction Skills Challenge, today we get to celebrate some of our students. The first person I'd like to bring up who's with us today is Mr. Randy Page. Mr. Randy Page is on the front cast for a few minutes. I'm also going to bring up Ms. Natalie Smith, who is our CCAE coordinator at Angela High School. I'm also going to bring up Ms. Shay Ray, who is our director of federal programs and CCAE founder that falls under her direction. A couple of young men were recognized first. Is the individual carpentry competitor Yao Martinez? Yao, feel free to join us. And also, winning the fastest group for deadly cheese was Mr. Edward Flores. So, Edward, <laughs> Edward Flores. Gentlemen, if you'll check the board's hand, we'll get a picture of the whole group. Okay, folks. Mr. Green, if you and the team will come close for a picture. You're good. <laughs> 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 We also have a group of young men here today under the direction of Mr. Page and Mr. Casper that we're recognizing with plaques. Uh, Mr. Green, if you'll please give Mr. Page uh, his plaque. And then we'd like to bring forward four young men who, uh, Mr. Newman, if you bring the picture back up of the team competition. Out of all the competitors uh, that was at the Ag Center at Chicopee Woods, our team got first. This is from a number of schools across the region and one young man else who is in the building. Um, <laughs> I think it was offered a job by quite a few different people uh, on, on the spot. So let me, as I call these four young men, uh, please join me in recognizing them as we give them a plaque, not only for competing, uh, but winning first place in the carpentry team competition. Mr. Edward Gallows. <laughs> Elvis Hernandez Cedillo. <laughs> Angel Ramos. And Jonathan Velasquez. <laughs> <laughs> so now for the little room that y'all been in that building that competition, you have a place to hang those flags. <laughs> yeah, come on, Randy. Right. Touch it. Hey guys, this is, what I want to let you know is that this team right here went in there and had everything set up ready to go. They couldn't touch any materials. And when they got started, they were blowing everybody away. Only team finished um, the team build, which was building from the foundation up, the plumbing, electrical, and roof, put the last screw in when they said time. <laughs> Only team <laughs> Yeah. 
Mr. Page, I don't get one of those hard hats. <laughs> well, there's that inside. <laughs> Mr. Stewart, you have to work for us. Hey. Four appreciation. Four appreciation. Uh, Mr. Ford, you come down to our list. Good deal. Uh, we also had the opportunity now, and it's great to have all of you here with us because you know, recognition during COVID definitely have to come home to an extent. So tonight we are recognizing quite a few different individuals. And I'd like to ask if Ms. Penny Fowler and Teresa Wiley will join us up here for just a moment as we recognize our school nutrition team, who are the first ones on the job every morning for the quietest time on campus for a few minutes. But what's more important is just recently they all received a score of 100 on their health score. And we thought what a great opportunity. What a great opportunity to recognize the women that lead these kitchens. Uh, so I would like to ask Ms. Siobhan Payne, who leads Centennial, Ms. Charette Jackson at Anoda, Annette King at Fair Street, Cheryl Hendricks at GEA, Amelia Jones at Monday Mill, Crystal Johnson at New Holland, Meyer Padron at Gainesville Middle School, Brandy Thomas at Gainesville High School, Amy Morrison. These women do an amazing job. And Ms. Fowler, Ms. Wiley, and their team do an amazing job of keeping our kids fed. How many meals a day do we serve? A lot. <laughs> a lot of us. Both breakfast and lunch. Uh, and these women just uh, are the smiles that the kids see as they go through the lines. They're the ones that make our kids happy, whether they know or not. And so we should be thank you so much. Definitely been a pleasure getting to know y'all over the last year and a half because of COVID. Because we got to spend a lot of time together at different times. So if y'all want to join us at lunch, we'll take a picture of you. For the second year in a row, we're able to recognize our finance department, who received the award of distinction for excellent financial reporting, which also means uh, that when it comes to our audit, that it's a good, clean audit. And the board out of it definitely loves that. At this time, I'd like to invite Ms. Kathy Bethel, our Chief Finance Officer, to come up. And I'd like to invite her team members, Ms. Katrina Green, Ms. Melissa Vasquez, Michelle Jackson Thatcher, Pamela Passmore, and Diana Viscano. Thank you. I just didn't want to let the opportunity to arrive without telling them uh, how amazing they are. It's amazing every day uh, with their talent, with the skills, and keep this department running. Um, and all of that put together, you know, made this important day possible. And it's just awesome. And that I'm very grateful. And congratulations. One thing I can say is over the last few years, I know as a team, they're always the ones in the front right corner of the building as you walk in. And what I love about this team is they cross every T and dot every I. And what you don't see behind the scenes is every month, there's always
always requisitioned, there's always payroll, there's always financial reports to go before the board. Whether it's Thanksgiving, whether it's winter break, whether it's spring break, it doesn't matter. Always something going on on a monthly basis. So, Blake, thank you so much for what you're doing. Congratulations. Our last recognition this evening, uh, formal recognition this evening, took place on Friday, November the 5th. This is the third iteration of Pioneers in Education. Pioneer RISA services Northeast Georgia school systems. There's a picture that Mr. Nimmick is going to be bringing up where every year we as a school system get to recognize a pioneer in education. The first year we honored uh, Ms. Merle Figueres, the second year was Dr. Marion Dyer, and this year we got to celebrate really big. So what exactly is a pioneer in education? These awards honor individuals who go above and beyond every day to support our students and staff. Whether the services provide exceptional instruction to create or strengthen community support, or to lend a helping hand and shoulder to lean on when our students and families need help, these individuals spend out of their efforts to make a difference. To be a pioneer in education is not to strive to be the best in the world, but to strive to be what is best for the world. They've given us a standard that we can follow, and we are honored to recognize and celebrate these individuals. While this happened uh, in Cleveland, tonight we get the opportunity to ask Mr. Mitchell to bring his award so we can give it to him again. <laughs> <laughs> and so please join me as we recognize our 30 plus board member, Mr. Willie Mitchell. All right, look at that. Thanks. To close out our, our commendations, uh, we have a contract with the U.S. Navy. You saw the results here. We we'll see it every meeting with our our cadets come and do the presentation of the car. But the contract with the U.S. Navy to have this program at Asheville High School. Part of the contract requires what is called an annual military inspection, where a member of the Navy visits for a day or so, and the cadets are subjected to interviews, and their records are examined, their academics are examined. It's a rigorous inspection. And so I commend Mr. Green, um, the inspection was very successful. The rating was above average. So we're real proud of that annual military inspection. Thank you. Several schools were able to host various levels of Veterans Day programs last week, uh, various levels. Uh, I do want to commend Enoda for hosting a very large celebration, inviting parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles in, and the kids in three in three shifts uh, performed patriotic songs for the veterans who were invited. Thank you, Dr. Roach and uh, Ms. Brock. Thank you. Our career days are part of our elementary school year at various times of the year. Uh, Angel Exploration hosted its career day last Friday. Uh, Ms. Sidman Beely did an excellent job organizing that. Principals, if you need a mentor for career day, I hope you will call on her. She did an excellent job in the turnout with the vendors, the uh, 
people who would have to explain their careers and with preparation uh, of the students who had questions and they were to write their answers down. Anyway, Renee, thank you. Uh, excellent job at GPN. <laughs> Uh, that concludes our uh, award ceremony or our ceremony part of our uh, meeting tonight. We will get into our formal business. Uh, now is a good time to leave if you need to leave. Uh, otherwise, stick around. <laughs> Do we have any uh, citizen comments? Nope. A motion on the adoption of the agenda. Uh, motion to approve with one small addition under consent. Uh, Boys and Girls Club item under the consent agenda. Okay. All right, you got a motion by Mr. Smith with an amendment. You got here a second. Second. A second by uh, Mr. Mitchell, all in favor. Motion carries. Uh, Mrs. Brown, do you like to tell us all the good things that are going on? Okay. <coughs> To the Lord and Dr. Williams, we do say thank you for the opportunities and all that you put into our school system. And I could not do my job without my wife and left hand, which is Ms. Miller and Ms. Veronica Hill, who is my assistant principal and my Coach. Uh, they push me, I push them, we push our students. So uh, we had a great year to start out. Uh, we've been maintaining about 515 students, uh, give or take a few at a time, but uh, we started out with about 400 and some students that we worked up to 515 and has maintained that number. I believe um, a few short years ago we were like 375. Yes. We under 400. So mm -hmm. And uh, we continue to accept and challenge all of our students to be giving their best at all times. Uh, we have a great uh, team that's working together. All of our teams have a pair of role, each grade level, and they use those pair of roles to help their students who are performing below level to push them to get on level. And uh, with those pair pros, we use them to pull small groups, uh, to push into classrooms, to help teachers. So there's never uh, downtime for our students. They have somebody with them, on them, pushing them all day long to get where they need to be, to be a graduate of this system. And also with our school this year, we are nurturing our students to be greater speakers. We have an announcement team, and they have students that come up and help every morning with our morning announcements. They can say the pledge, our raw, our motto, and other events that we have. We let our students do those announcements. We have people that work with them to speak loud and clear. No matter what their language is, they're able to do all the announcements and share with the whole school. And to hear and see our students speak, their faces light up when they get to come into my office and be on the intercom to speak to the whole school. They walk in, oh, you can see us. Uh, my little camera monitor's on. So they're looking around, obviously.
Yeah, I can see you in the hall. It's like, you don't tell my friends you see them. <laughs> so that's the first excitement. And then when their friends hear them and they come out of the office and people are saying, congratulations, you did a good job. Your voice was loud and clear. Their little faces just light up to know that they were a part of our morning in the past weeks. So we're teaching them to be great speakers. Uh, also with our challenge, challenge for our students, uh, Ms. Hill started us a math competition. Uh, with our math competition, each grade level is challenging each other to have the highest percentage of math uh, tests completed in a week. Uh, from that, I read it. And so there's one student winner, or sometimes two or three student winners, who have the highest proficiency of correct answers. And then the teachers compete to see which teacher uh, students put in the most time on their math problems. So we have a weekly student winner and then also a grade level teacher winner for every grade level. And that's a great way to challenge our students with their math. They're staying on their path and also improving their math skills and of course, they get a little treat that Ms. Hill brings around on the cart. So everybody's looking to hear their name and also to get a treat weekly for working hard on their math. With our reading this year, we uh, did an extra training with our woodworks, um, differentiation. So uh, our VIP and ESOL teachers are getting that training. Then they come back and train each grade level all the differentiation activities for our group learn to get our students uh, more proficient at their reading. Uh, last week, we were enjoying a lunch from winning the dance contest at the Big Red Rally. So uh, Miss Joy showed up with our pizza and salad. And you talk about an exciting time. We danced a little bit more for lunch last week. So thank you, Dr. Reels. And, uh, for a treat that we were able to get for that dance, for winning that rally at the Big Red Rally. Um, we work daily very hard. Our new counselor has been an excitement and joy for our students. She started several groups that she's working with. We have a kind group, we have a leadership group, and she meets weekly. And then every Friday, we have a sit and talk with our parents that they can come in in the morning or the afternoon to talk about any problem or anything they have going on that they need to discuss about students or what's going on at school. Uh, also, we have a sip and take for our induction team teachers. They meet weekly with Ms. Hill, Ms. Bill and I, and Ms. Hill is leading a book study with them. And she used to serve them a beverage, coffee, tea, hot chocolate, and then we sit and talk and they get to take something back that will help them become better teachers. And any questions about fashion? May I have questions for Mrs. Brown? What pizza did you get? <laughs> salad. I ate my salad. I ate the pizza when I got home. I like salad <laughs> from Mellow Mushroom to bed. Have a great dress. So it sounds like we need to have an advanced competition again next year. Yes. You know, some people thought that uh, we were a little biased in our decision to fair street. Or two of them, I think Centennial and High School, felt pretty strong in the day. So, so just to remind them of how great the food was of the first class <laughs> pizza. I think my answers were the best. So. <laughs> you want to have a dance off with the We are. <laughs> Mr. Mayor Chavez, this evening, 
Uh, we were able to visit a couple of Fridays ago. I'm uh, going to go down the slide for you to get right into the images. Definitely, the school is coming together rather nicely. When you walk the halls, they're nice and wide. You get to the classroom, you get to see uh, it's really the school coming together. The view there, of course, is an aerial shot from McEver Road uh, just above Free Chapel, the North Campus, as you're looking down upon the school. Once again, just to orient you about where everything is, the big building in the front, the right side, is your front office area. Also, then behind it, you have the media center, band, chorus, and drama. On the left side, you have your gym and your cafeteria and kitchen area. So, the front is parent uh, pickup, drop off area. The left side is your bus zone area. The right side will be the parking for staff off of Google. The next slide. Uh, is showing the uh, bleacher pad and the football field. So once again, another aerial shot as you're looking down. You can see the field house off to the right. Uh, the concrete pad is where the bleachers will be going to the dirt in front of it. Of course, is where a full-size field will go as well as a uh, kind of a walking uh, concrete pad around it as well. Inside, some of the rock features are starting to go up. Uh, you see we have, that's in the main hallway from the trophy case. There's one directly to the left of it as well. This feature uh, is an accent in quite a few places, including the uh, cafeteria, including the media center as well. Cover portico at the bus drop-off area. And the last image you see is the front of the building uh, as you're looking. There will be an awning uh, cover area there that will be in front of the building uh, before too long, but you can see the color schemes. And I encourage you to, uh, as always, drive out there and check it out. We got plenty of rock to share. If only all that had come from the side. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't quite find those colors in the rock. We we plastic. Uh, Mr. Newman, you'll pull up the next one, which I believe is the cafeteria kitchen media center. I believe today, Mr. Green sent me a picture that has the CO for the building. A, a big smile between he and Clay uh, that is able to show us where we are. Here's going down to slide three that has the image. And you'll see another aerial shot of the cafeteria and media center. So once again, the bottom floor is your cafeteria, second floor is your media center, does connect to the current three-story building. To continue to slide down, you'll see the work as you're above, really, uh, Pearl Nicks Parkway and above the trees looking down. You see the parking lot that is there. It will really be for uh, some of the student activity staff, but more importantly, the kitchen. Uh, staff that will be using that space as well as the, uh, the dumpsters located around back. Uh, you see the awnings going up if you drive on the campus now. The, these pictures are a couple of weeks old in this instance. Uh, all of the awnings are up. We also have the brick uh, wrapped around the columns uh, above each of or around each of the awnings. So that installation is looking extremely uh, fantastic. And then the last picture is just a, an image of the parking lot that's there uh, behind. We have one more maybe. Uh, just the, the loading dock area. You see that there is a kind of a retaining wall or a protected wall there to protect some of the views. And of course, uh, from a brick standpoint, matches the scheme of the rest of the building. And then the uh, last set of slides, the Student Activity Center, it is progressing well and still slated to open in August of 2022. You'll see in slide three, uh, just once again, the aerial shot on the left side is where you have a locker room meeting space as well as the ROTC and band on the third floor. On that left side, the right side, you will begin to see still being erected within the next couple of weeks. Uh, just as a, uh, an item of information, over the winter break, the cafeteria will be demolished. And we're trying to do that when students are not on campus. So if over the winter break, uh, if you drive on campus and notice some construction going on in that area, uh, we expect to go out to bid uh, for the three, new three-story instruction building uh, just within the next couple of weeks and hope to start construction in January on it. The next slide uh, just kind of shows you an angle as you're looking from the track and field area back towards the Student Activity Center. You can then see some of the images inside the building. Uh, on the next image, um, that is the second level interior walls. Can't tell a whole lot of a lot of a block is going up. The next image, it's showing you some more uh, exterior corner as you look out uh, towards the track and field area. And then you can see the third level, <coughs> third level uh, roof choice going up, uh, which all of that is, should be completed uh, fairly soon to where we can move the crane now to the other side. 
And that is the update on the three major projects. Uh, all of those, all three of those will be operational in August of 2022. So definitely this is a crunch time with a lot of different things going on. We're excited to take one project off uh, the list, which would be the cafeteria media center, but we're about to add the three-story structure building, which is the last scheduled project of our bond record. Did you say it would be available by August? No, the three-story one will be August of 2023. Any questions? All right. Mr. Niles and Mr. President, we're going to this. Next up, Mr. Allen. Uh, I'm assuming this is the first reading of. Now, as Ms. Allen's come up, because this is a regulation, uh, we actually don't have to bring this before the board and it's not voted on. But it is because we are adding the second middle school, we are updating our regulation for the choice enrollment period related to the second middle school. Good evening, board. With the addition of Angel Middle School West Campus, we've updated um, our regulation to CR1 on school admissions to um, highlight the choice options for our middle school both campuses. So all language is congruent with our elementary choice enrollment and transportation and clusters still remain. I do. Uh, Donna, would it be helpful to a reader to separate the paragraphs of uh, the six through eight information and the nine through twelve information in, in just separate uh, paragraph. There's nothing wrong with the language that you have proposed, but my thought is just to make it a little easier to read. Yes, by separating it. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Zell. <laughs> All right, next. I don't want to get her action items uh, that were moved. Every November, we bring forward board meeting dates for the next year. We we make one minor adjustment in how we've done things in the last few years. We've been recognizing one school uh, per board, but by adding a board meeting, but by adding another school, we're kind of running out of months to recognize schools. We really don't want to start it in August. Uh, so what we're doing this next year, which we start the next school year in September of 2022, is combining Centennial and Fair Street. High school will have their own month. Each middle school will have their own month. Monday Mill and GTA together are together. And then Anova and New Holland are together. So our hope is not only to uh, recognize a couple of schools at the same time, but also we hope we get student recognition back on the agenda like we did tonight uh, with the high school. Do you have any questions about the calendar? I do. Might we uh, ponder? Uh, the either the June twentieth or July eighteenth meeting at Gainesville Middle School West. Either June twentieth or July eighteenth. I'm not afraid to do that. Yep, we'll put it down, and then, uh, as long as we have the CEO for that time, we'll do that again. Yeah. And you choose which one is best for. Speaking for Mr. Niles, you want to sound a lot better. That's fine. Mr. Mayor, you can uh, be glad to host us, I'm sure. So you, you pick and make the adjustment. We'll do it. If you will, then um, need a motion to a motion to amend. Okay. So motion, motion to adopt the calendar with one amendment. All right. We have a motion by Mr. Smith with an amendment. Second. We have a second by Mr. Norholz. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Uh, Mr. Thompson, you have a looks like technology request for Gaines and School West. I have a request uh, for all schools. This is a sort of a two part request. Uh, we are coming before you tonight to ask for funds to be able to place interactive flat panels in every school, existing school. And then we are also asking for funding to be able to buy the flat panels to put in Angel Middle School West as well. So we'll be retrofitting existing buildings where we had projectors or TVs, and removing those and placing the interactive flat panel instead. And then 
at Gainesville Middle School West that the building has been built with the plan to put these panels in. Very much is what you saw in the advanced notes. So um, it's recommended that Gainesville City Schools Board of Education approve the purchase of 471 clear touch interactive five panels. 386 to retrofit existing schools, 85 for Gainesville Middle School West from Tech Optics, um, $1,411,145.16 to be paid from ARP funds, $319,958.26 to be paid from Squash 5 excess funds. We did have the request for proposal out um, for, from October 22nd to November 8th. Um, we received a couple of uh, responses. One of those was really non-responsive in that it did not, um, it did not provide the, the items that we had requested, nor did it um, list the information we had asked for in the bid. Um, Tech Optics is the company uh, that has put in all the panels that we have today and that they've done a fantastic job. We feel very comfortable. Motion to approve. Got a motion by Mr. Smith. Got a second by Mr. Mitchell. Any questions or comments? Is there a secondary market for the used equipment? We will look at which one of those um, items we can possibly resell. We have a, a, an option to sell through a gut deal site. And for things that we feel like are still within usability, we'll do that. Some of the uh, televisions will be able to reuse. Uh, any of our partner agencies might have an interest? That could be. Um, we'll definitely have to look at the disposition process to make sure we um, you know, follow the process for selling if we sell them directly in the community. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and second. Any more questions, comments? All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Last action item is the presentation of the October financial statements. Mrs. Captain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Revenues for the month were 4.9 million. Our expenditures are at 4.7 million, um, which is about the same as they were last year. Almost the same exact same percentage as they were last year. So that tells us a revenues was a little bit um, short um, this time last year, but we are receiving two additional payments from uh, the city's state office payments. So those are sharp and coming nicely. Our EBITDA balance is 11.7 million. The month covered is 2.2 million. And our slash six is still coming in the 900,000 range of 980,000. Slash is looking good. Any questions for this step? Oh, just a little comment. Beverly Williams from the City of Sunnets office stopped me last week at lunch just to tell me what a good job you're doing. I thank her. I agree with her. And thank her. That was all the reasons for stopping. You said lunch? You pick up the lunch? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Next time, Mr. Duff, if you will, take her up the lunch. Any other questions? Do I hear a motion to uh, approve the $2 million? Second. Motion by Smith. Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Normal. All in favor? Motion carried. Thank you, Mrs. Pethel. Uh, are there any discussion items? I would just like to remind the board we have uh, two dates, one of which uh, you know about, but just a reminder when we return from the Thanksgiving break, we will have uh, board training for facilities. Uh, on that Monday from 9 to 12, uh, we will be taking a bus around the CPD Middle School as well as the uh, sites on the Gainesville High School campus. And then Ms. Griffin will be uh, working on a ribbon cutting ceremony for the cafeteria, kitchen, and media center scheduled for January the 4th at 11 a.m.
part of the reason we're choosing that time is a work day and it also allows the high school uh, staff to be a part of anybody else. All right. <clears throat> uh, any other discussion items? I hear a motion to adjourn in two Some of the executive session, some of it. That's what Mr. Smith. Second by Mr. Mitchell, all in favor. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming.